All right. So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, second Design System Essentials we, uh, webinar. Uh, this one is about um, process. And today we are going to talk about contribution process uh, with all our uh, lovely speakers. Um, before starting, uh, just a few uh, reminders. Uh, if you are all not already uh, in our Zero Slack community, uh, you can join our uh, Zero Slack uh, so you can be in touch with the Zero High team and ask all of your questions about Zero High, but also about design system, design ops, design in general. Uh, so feel free to, to join uh, this Slack. Uh, if you have any question uh, or if you need that assistance, you can uh, send a message directly to Corny in the chat. Uh, she will be uh, able to help you. And uh, I know that uh, uh, this question uh, is important for everyone. So yeah, of course, we will record this um, uh, this webinar and we will send it uh, uh, the link a few days after. And um, I'm sure that everyone here is, uh, is very nice, but uh, it's important to remind that uh, we are in a safe place. So yeah, basically, just don't be a jerk. Um, also, if you are not aware, uh, we have just launched our second edition of How We Document Survey. Um, and our goal is to capture, you know, the current state of design system documentation. Uh, so uh, if you have still not uh, and, uh, filled this, uh, this survey, uh, we will send you the link uh, or you can just scan uh, the QR code right now uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to participate and take this survey and get the result. Uh, we will share the result um, next year, uh, early into 2023. Uh, and now it's time to introduce our amazing speakers for today. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to have uh, Teddy Voisin and uh, Mark Karen uh, with, with, uh, with us uh, today. Um, Teddy is a senior product designer uh, working at uh, Bark Market, and Mark uh, is a UX and design system manager at Red Hat. Um, maybe, Teddy, you want to start introducing yourself? Yeah, hello, everyone. I'm a product designer at Bark market in charge of design system um we start i joined two years ago when it was just the beginning of the design system and it grew a lot uh, those last two years and um we will share with you today some of the insights that we learned along the way great uh mark cool thanks uh i'm mark karen i work at red hat i'm a manager for one of our dedicated design system teams um I guess similar to what Teddy just said, um, we'll share how we've had many growing pains. I've been at Red Hat for about 10 years, so I've seen uh, a lot of change um, kind of prior to the design systems even being a thing, um, or at least as popular as they are today. Um, so it's been a fun, fun journey. Cool, great. Um, well, to 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 start with um, this uh, the, with the first question, uh, I, I was curious to know um, uh, we you know we're at a high level, uh, how does your design system uh, team work with the rest of the design and developers team uh, on a daily basis uh, project? You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe Mark, you you want to start? Sure. Um, so we actually have two design systems. Um, one you probably are familiar with called Patternfly. Um, that's primarily for our products. Um, the other one, which is, I guess you could say newer, um, is for the rest of our digital footprint. Um, so all of our web properties and other web applications that aren't technically products. Um, and we're just calling that rather uncreatively Red Hat Design System um, or RHDS for short. Um, and, uh, you know, and my team is a particularly a cross-functional team dedicated to this. Um, and uh, I guess how we work with the rest of the teams, while my team's dedicated, um, ma the majority of contributions and the majority of um, the work being done is very decentralized. Um, so um, our designers, we have designers in multiple different um, departments. We don't really have like a central design department or anything. Um, engineering has their own designers. Actually, there's several departments within engineering that have their own designers. Um, IT has some of their own designers, marketing where I am, we have our own designers and developers as well. And so um, there's a lot of attempt to 
um, come together constantly and break down our silos. Um, and um, it takes a lot of coordination and effort. Um, there's some obviously some issues with that. Um, it's very difficult sometimes when you're um, you don't have a particular authority telling you that there's one way to do something. We have to try to agree. Um, but Red Hat's a pretty amiable place, so it's great. Uh, but it still takes a while to get stuff done. Um, but anyway, so um, my team works on a daily basis with these other teams that are more decentralized. Um, and, you know, we take in um, bugs and um, new ideas, new features, and we discuss those um, uh, those things with uh, design leads from the different departments. Um, we have like what we call a design program office now. And um, that sort of is the governance of of how our design leads interact with each other and and um, share new ideas, come to an agreement on what patterns should look like, what our design language should look like. Um, and um, yeah, so I don't know if that answers fully the question <laughs> it was a roundabout, but. <laughs> Cool, cool. Uh, did you do you want to share with us how what's your daily yeah. basis? Yeah, we are not uh, at the big scale as, as we're at, but um, at Black Market we have a hybrid way of dealing with design system. Very early in the design system creation, we decided that we would um, treat the design system as a product. So the team dedicated to design system is really working on supporting the usage of the product by all the embedded teams. And um, so it's mainly two things. It's helping the support. So answering questions, solving issues, writing documentation. And we also have a huge part of our work that is working on big level topics and projects like accessibility of our design systems, um, making sure that when we have, when we hop in a new country that our design system is working for this new market. So it's a mix of both. Everyone is able in the in the company to contribute to the design system and we will deep dive a little bit more in this topic later, but everyone is able to contribute, but the design system team is um, here to support and to help uh, people to use, contribute and, um, and um, make the design system evolve because they are the embedded teams are the ones using the design system. They know what they need. So it's a very uh, interesting um, conversation that we have on day to day basis with embedded designers and engineers. OK, interesting. And uh, speaking of, of contribution, um, Teddy, maybe this one is for you, uh, but uh, how do you manage a, uh, a contribution to the design system? Uh, is there a process to validate or to decline contributions, for example? Uh, how does it work at uh, back market? Yeah, it evolved a lot because as the teams were growing, we realized that the system we had in place wasn't um, good enough or um, uh, fast enough. But, um, Basically, when an engineer or designer needs a new component or an update to a component, they create a support request. And it's been it's reviewed by the design system team. And on we make a first assessment of uh, of if we want the component to be included or not. And then there's an open discussion with everyone, saying, oh, this component might be used in this and this and this scope. But it's a, it's a diagram that we are following. Is it reusable? Yes, no. Uh, is it um, easy to maintain? Yes, no. And we have multiple questions that we are trying to answer and that we um, help us take the decision. Okay, cool. Uh, what about you, uh, Mark? I'm curious to know how it works at Red, at Red Hat. Yeah, um, I don't know if we have, I used the word decentralized late, uh, earlier. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to label what we are because while a lot of our contributions are rather decentralized, uh, we kind of more have a hybrid way of going about things because my team's the only one that's dedicated. We'd like to have more dedicated folks participating from other teams. So, um, but as far as how that's managed, um, the ownership isn't on one team, even though we're dedicated. So you can see my my difficulty in giving us a label. Um, everyone, every team 
through their leads has a voice. And so when they, a particular team in the sort of, I guess you'd call it federated approach, if they have a need, um, they can build it. Okay. Um, and generally they'll start through a design process. Um, they need a particular component or pattern for something they're solving. Um, that gets pitched through our design uh, leads uh, working group. They discuss, does it fit our, lang our design language? Is there anything similar we might be working on? Can we find alignment? Um, and then in some cases we agree and it just, it's just pretty simple. In some cases it turns out, Hey, we have two slight variations that we might want to consider, or maybe they're two different components. Um, and then, so we sort of hash that out, um, go back to the drawing board or whatever we need to do. And then when that gets finalized, um, someone, anyone on any team that's a dedicated developer or part-time developer, um, can pick it up. Um, but our project is open source, so the community can participate too. Um, and then, you know, sort of the whether or not we pick something up or do something is still maintained by the the leads. So, okay, <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. You know, like the, we have this constant balance. Um, I guess we're technically hybrid, but the, there's a constant push and pull between trying to give everyone a voice and make everyone feel like there's a very democratic approach to doing things. Um, but then, you know, you need some sort of leadership. So it's not headless, you know, and, and so, yeah. Okay. And uh, following the, yeah, the, the same question, maybe if we are being more, you know, specific, uh, I'm curious to know more about your tooling uh, when it comes to contribution. As, do you have a specific workflow uh, to ease contribution and engage your team to contribute? Um, Teddy, maybe you you, you want to take this one? Um, a lot of things were done through Slack. Okay. Um, a lot of discussions were, were done through Slack and then we are writing specification and confidence and creating Jira tickets and stuff. But one issue we have with Slack is it's really hard to have, um, to keep track of the historic discussions and why we decided this at some point. So we are slowly moving to using a support tool, um, Service Desk, because it will allow us to yeah, to keep track of those discussion. If uh, in six months a designer comes and asks, um, "Should I? Can I have icons in buttons?" We would be able to search in the history of the discussion regarding buttons that um, six months ago we decided that we won't do it for those reasons. And that's something that when we when we when you receive a lot of uh, request support request you need to automatize and keep track of all those discussions because um, we are hiring a lot people are um, not aware of all the past discussions so yeah keeping track of all of those especially because we have the ownership of the design system and we are able to say no to something we need to be able to justify why um why we are saying no and we need someone in six months to be able to see why we said no in the first place okay cool uh does it work in a different way at rate at uh, you, you would say mark um maybe some of the tooling but the problems are the same so it's funny teddy said earlier we're not as big as red hat but i think everywhere probably has the same problems um we have um you know g suite google suite um and we had a lot of questions and stuff coming through chat channels. And as Teddy mentioned, it's just a nightmare to try to find things. Um, so most of our work, because it's open source, um, is through GitHub. So we have discussion boards and issues to track. And so we we try to maintain that. We have project boards now that GitHub's starting to make that space a little bit cooler and easier to use. Um, so most of our project management goes right through that. So from design um, right to development. And so, uh, 
does it mean that in your contribution process uh, today, uh, it's everyone who is in charge to uh, of this um, contribution process? I mean, is there is there the whole team uh, involved, or is there a specific person uh, who is in charge with the contribution process or not? Um. So, yeah, I guess in charge wise, we have like a producer that, um, or I guess kind of like a project manager that. Uh, runs day to day functions and tries to help us keep things organized. Um, but the the at the end of the day, it's the leads that uh, are in charge of um, controlling what what's going in, what's not, um, architecturally, design wise, etc. Um, yeah, but you know it's open yeah. <laughs> anyone um, inside and out. So um, okay, 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 and. Uh... How, I'm curious to know how, if you found a way, you know, to engage your with uh, with your contributor. Uh, are you working? Are you working with them closely, uh, so you, you can, you know, uh, federate and engage uh, people to contribute? Um, um, is that for me first? <laughs> yeah, go, go first. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we haven't um, since our RHCS, the new design system. Um, is relatively new. There's not much external engagement happening. Most is internal. Um, all of the sort of coordination and outreach is going through our design program office, um, which is headed by the you know directors from each major design office. Um, and you know we have a sort of brand and cultural outreach um, group, working group that tries to make sure everyone's plugged in and knows where the tools and resources are and feels like we're one larger design team, even though we're federated. Um, and then we have a tools and and um, design op sort of working group. Um, and and that's I, I sit on both um, working groups, actually, but um, our job in that is to is to figure out how we're going to work together, um, building out our sort of playbook, as we call it, on how contributions are going to function. Um, what our meetings are supposed to be like, um, you know, what those outcomes are. Um, yeah, so usually because we have um, somebody from each team represented, the outreach happens at the design lead sort of disseminating information to their teams. Um, yeah, so we work closely with them. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, and how does it work uh, for you today uh, about, you know, engagement with your contributors? <laughs> Uh, we are um, very lucky at Bike Market. Uh, engaging people to contribute to design system has never been an issue. Uh, we had the issue of having too many contributions <laughs> and having to, um, yeah, not to stop them, but to help because we were we are a small design system team. Uh, two engineers, two designer, a product manager. We 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 are not able to handle all the requests. So we try to automatize things and reduce the amount of manual tasks that we have to do uh, to focus on helping people. Um, so we, when a designer or engineer come with a request, uh, we have support heroes. So each week, one designer and one engineer are dedicated to answering support questions. And if a request comes during my week, I will be in charge of following the contribution from the beginning right to the release of the component. So along the way of the contribution and its multiple steps, people will know that I will be the owner regarding design system questions on this component and they can reach out to me and ask questions. Um, so yeah, we never had the issue of engaging people. Um, that's that's uh, a luck we have, we, we are aware of that. Um, but we try to, we try to communicate as best as possible. Uh, so we have this Slack channel with, that was for people to ask us questions, but we take advantage of this unique channel to communicate a lot of, on new components, releases, uh, when we have big informations to communicate about. And we have a monthly newsletter where we summarize everything that happened during a month. And it's a good starting point when you join back market to read all the previous news newsletter because you can see everything that happened during the last few months. So um, yeah, communication is key, I think. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, um, and 
I guess that when you started to work on your design system and especially about your contribution uh, model, uh, it, it probably evolved uh, until today. Uh, and so I'm curious to, yeah, to know more about how has your contribution process changed uh, over the years? You know, uh, is, is it something that uh, worked um, from the first day or did you improve how your con your contribution process? Uh, anyone who wants to jump on this question? <laughs> I, I can start. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we were asking ourselves if our design system should be open source or not. So we decided to include in the design system only components that could be that were not related to back market direct activity. Uh, so selling products. Um, but a few months, a year ago, we decided that we won't we won't do that. We wanted to create a design system for us. And so we opened the gate and we had a lot of requests. Okay. And now uh, we try to find the right balance because we don't want to include everything um, because we don't have the ownership and we don't have the knowledge on all the aspects of the product. If we take the, the product card, for example, it's a uh, component, technical component, we use it across multiple pages and multiple scopes, but the needs for the product card is evolving a lot. Um, there is a lot of marketing requirements. There is a lot of SEO requirements and the design system team cannot be aware of everything. So we decided that the product card won't be a design system component. It would be handled by the customer journey tribe as a, a child subcomponent, it's still not clearly defined yet. We are thinking of using the Spotify way of having a master design system and child design system, but that's not the case today. Okay, cool. And uh, how about you, uh, Mark? Uh, what's the evolution of your contribution process uh, at Red Hat? That's a good question. Um, in my 10 years at Red Hat, um, we've gone from there being very siloed, um, which I think is just natural of a lot of places. Um, we tend to try to like spin up a team to solve something because every department has the ability to find engineers and designers. So they just solve their own problems. Um, and after a few years uh, since I first started, it became a, a massive effort across teams to, to find each other and realize we're solving the same problems in different ways and that's not good. Um, and so there were years of web summits or other types of meetings to try to get everyone together um, to find out what the direction we wanna go and how do we work together. And, um, and through that discussion, right? Um, and trying to stay true to sort of our open source, um, democratic type values right um we came across this approach um, that seems to be hybrid yet federated you know it started off more decentralized but we found out um after many years that um as you know it, we didn't have anybody dedicated so therefore there was no prioritization people just got busy with their own tasks and didn't focus on building out a system um, and so my team was spun up to sort of create that um, prioritization um, and then just sort of buckle down and try to get things done while working with other teams to get their input so we weren't we're not owning owning it we're just trying to make sure that it keeps traction um, yeah and but that you know that comes across in a challenge for us too because we're in marketing and so sometimes it gets viewed as our design system when it's not we don't own it we're trying to work with others and um but that seems to be, you know, might be a later question, but that seems to be one of the, the biggest growing pains is finding out the sort of decentralized doesn't work. But then when you dedicate something while you're also trying to remain open and democratic becomes um, troublesome too. So it's constant check on, on that. Okay, yeah, interesting because uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask then um, if you had to change something about your contribution model, what, what, would, what would it be? Uh, um, um, yeah, it would be for me personally, it would be if I had the power 
to make all the other teams find somebody dedicated so they can also help us and feel like part of the process where we're moving very fast and breaking things and trying to get others to contribute and help us and give reviews and give their opinions and and you know when they're busy rightly so it's hard to get their feedback or their input um, so it takes a lot of effort um, to meet bi-weekly to make sure we're getting answers and we've got action items and um, it moves a little bit slower but if we were more dedicated across all the teams right then it would move a lot faster um, cool and uh and you uh, teddy uh, is, is there some things that you would like to change if you could yeah that's kind of the same uh every team can contribute to the design system but not every time uh, every team has dedicated time to contribute to the design system and that's why a few months ago we decided to have a product manager on our side um, because it's helping us um, communicate with other product managers and including dedicated time to design stem contribution we have a i would say pretty heavy contribution model with a lot of different steps and it can be sometimes seen as a pain for um, engineers and designers because contributing to the design system takes more time than creating a component from scratch on the side. We have more checks um, because we check accessibility, we check um, the, um, the consistency with the rest of the system. So contributing to the design system takes more time it's something that you have to accept at some point, I think. Uh, if you want to have a dedicated team centralized in the ownership of the design system, you have more people to validate decisions, so it takes more time. But yeah, having dedicated time from every feature team would help us at least solve a little bit of, um, reduce a little bit of this um, contribution time. Okay, well, I have maybe a, a last question before jumping to the question from the audience. Um, if a team is starting a contribution process, uh, what's one piece of advice that you would give them? Anyone who wants to start, feel free. Um, it, your design system team could be centralized or federated or hybrid. I think communication is the key and you have to be, even if your team is centralized and you have the ownership of the design system, you are not the one using it. So you need, but like every product, your product needs to serve people and to help people do their job. So you have to communicate with them, hear their feedbacks and take them into account. Even if you're the one who can say no at some point, you have to explain why you can say no and why you said no at, at this point so yeah communication keeping track of all communications it's the a lot of decisions that we took two years ago regarding the design stem were lost and it's just a, a time consuming to go through the same steps again two years later so keeping track of decision communicating about all of those making sure that all everyone is uh, aware of the decision, even if everyone is uh, is not um, fully aligned with those, but you can explain why you took this, the decision and they are documented somewhere. Okay, interesting. How about you, Mark? Do you have any advice that you would share with us? Other than plus wanting what Teddy just said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I, yeah I, think, I, I think he hit the nail on the head. So, one document everything like you said if you if you've made decisions in the past and things are going to come up again because they always come up again it's good to sort of have some backing obviously things change so maybe you change your opinion but at least you've got something somewhere where people can read or or you can remember you know what you did um and then the other one you know our producer calls it going on a listening tour um but the idea that as Teddy said, it doesn't really matter what your your model is. Um, you're not the one using it. In some cases, you are the one using it, but you're not the only one using it. Um, we are so large 
that the idea that we would make one pattern for one thing and that would work for everyone um, is just impossible. Um, there's so many use cases from documentation to dashboard type widgets, which are not the same or have the same sort of um, feel as like a marketing content site would. And so we have so many use cases that our small teams can't ever come up with. Um, and so it's constantly evolving. Um, and so going around and finding out what people need to do. And I think in sort of our system, having it hybrid allows the people working on it to be a part of that process and to pitch ideas for new things that they need and build it themselves in many ways. Um, and then we have these checkpoints to make sure that they're part of it. Um, the other side of that too would be even in the technology side, um, you can't double down on a single technology unless your company literally only is on a single technology, but in our case, that's impossible as well. So, um, how do you maintain multiple versions of a design system? You know, that's very, very difficult. Um, okay, all right. Um, we have a bunch of questions from the audience. That's great. Um, maybe I can start with this one from Jiri, I think. Uh, sorry if I misspelled the, the name. Um, if contributors contribute to your design system, uh, do you require uh, the design encode as part of the contribution or do you build a component on demand? Uh, maybe Teddy, you, you want to take this one? Yeah, um, they contribute, they do the design, they do the, they do the code. Um, the only thing that the design STEM team is uh, doing by themselves is the documentation, but mm -hmm. We, uh, we are trying to change that. Um, uh, we change the specification templates that designer or engineers needs to fill out when they have a request to be closer to the information or architecture we are using for our documentation. And most of the content put in the specification can be not copy pasted because we are rephrasing stuff to make sure it's uh, using the same uh, way of speaking as the rest of our documentation, but our specification are getting closer and closer to documentation. Maybe at some point in the future, we will let people that want to do that um, create documentation, but not all designers and engineers are um, have the, 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 the need or wants to create documentation or even very complex Figma components all our designers don't have the skills to do it. So we are here to help them. Uh, if they have a need and they don't know how to build this Sigma component, we can help them. And same on the tech side, if um, they are not um, accessibility expert of, or if they don't have a lot of knowledge on this topic, we have people inside the team that can help them and answer that question. And at the same time, help them be better at this. And maybe next time they will be able to do it themselves. We are not doing it uh, on our side. We are always peer designing or peer programming to make people understand what we are doing and helping them um, grow in their knowledge as well. Cool. Uh, does it work differently at Red Hat, Mark? It's pretty similar, actually. Um, you know, we have developers and designers on all our teams that have the capability of designing a thing or developing a thing. Um, it does get reviewed by our team um, and by the other leads so that it we make sure that it fits. Um, and if they want to learn, because we actually in development where we are using web component technology. And so um, if you're unfamiliar with it, then we have like office hours where people can come in and learn how to build so they can partake in, in the process uh, more closely. Um, sometimes we get stuff from, you know, other stakeholders, I need this thing built, right? And so then we design it and, and build it ourselves. Um, so kind of just depends on where it comes from. Uh, but yeah, like, like Teddy said, we're my, my team specifically, but um, it's still open to other leads, but we, we tend to take the brunt of the work on documenting um, stuff. I see. Cool. Um, 
I have a, maybe a question from Nidia, uh, who talks about quality. How about the quality uh, bar for a specific component? How do you decide on that? Uh, is there, I don't know, I'm curious, maybe you, you have some documentation about, about this or a checklist. Is, is there something specific about, you know, how to specify the, 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 the quality of a component? Um, from a design standpoint or development, I guess kind of two two sides. If if it fits our design language that we've defined and it feels, I mean, I guess it's more of a gut check. Does it feel like Red Hat? Um, then we're good to go. Does it solve the problem, right? Does it meet accessibility requirements? Um, development wise, you know, it would go through a review process to make sure that it's written according to our code standards um, and then also tested rigorously for accessibility as well. Um, okay yeah same for us we have a review both on the design and uh, tech side um, a, de a design team member team member needs to validate the component and in our specifications we have a lot of checklist things like do you test it do your component with real life real world data do you tested it with in German to make sure that it supports long text? Um, those keyboard navigation has been specified, and we have a checklist that needs to be um, checked for the specifications to be validated and for the implementation to start. Uh, I see there's also a question that uh, often asked. So I think it could be interesting for the audience to maybe understand uh, about your design system team. Um, makeup and uh, organization, especially about how many people are working in your design system team. Uh, if you have maybe numbers or, uh, you know, the specific roles uh, that uh, are part of your design system team. Uh, Mark, you want to start maybe? Um, I was answering another question in the chat, but you, it was about um, what types of um, skills and roles do we have on design ops? Was that generally it? Okay. Um, yeah, so I have um, designers and developers on my team. Um, designers are, um, you know, more of the UX variety, I guess. And, um, we focus, you know, really small on each individual component. Um, a lot of them have a lot of experience with accessibility as well. Um, not necessarily a specialist, but, but, um, understanding the considerations that need to be made, um, saves a lot of time. We do have accessibility experts. So when, we get to the end, they they finally give the approval, but it certainly speeds things along if people are are good at that to begin with. Um, developers, um, it's mostly front end skills, um, and particularly web components, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's kind of a requirement. Yeah, since okay. we're not, we didn't double down on React or Angular or anything like that. We, uh, web components can be used everywhere. And how about you, Teddy? Yeah. On on our side, we have uh, two product designers. Um, we try to find people that are comfortable writing documentation, or writing, communicating. It's as it's a, for us a key um, a key point to have as a design system designer. Um, we have two engineers that are. Um, we took the approach of having people that are very uh, accessibility centered and um, that had previous experiences in design system. Um, and we have one project manager that never worked on a design system. And when we were looking for it, we didn't, we weren't looking for someone who had experience managing project managing a design system because we want our design system to be considered as a product. So any type of project manager could do the work. Um, but one of the key points that we are looking in candidates for our team is their communication skills. All right. Um, so I have a question from Gerald. Uh, who says that how do you handle teams asking for specific needs for existing components you support? Uh, example, uh, a team who wants to add a link to your alert uh, status component. How do you answer? How do you manage uh, this kind of request? 
it, it, I'm not, not like, sure if that yeah like any component update because for us it would be considered as a component update so um we do a kickoff meeting okay trying to come uh, to understand the needs then we open a, a open discussion on slack saying is there any other teams that would need or benefit this update and uh, we try to see if the effort of adding this uh, is worth or if it's if it would add too much complexity to the component. Uh, and in that case, we try to find other ways to solve the issues with existing um, components. For a link in a, in a status bar, it's pretty easy, but for some other complex feature or component update, the discussion is uh, a little bit longer. Mark, if you have anything to add, uh, yeah, it's kind that. of kind yeah. of the same. Um, we we just use our design leads like working group sessions to um, raise new components, new things that are being worked on or thought about, and and check to see is is this a a, a valid component? Do you have anything similar? Um, if we were to add this link to this thing in this way, would that um, affect anything? And do you guys think that it fits our design language um, so discussion sort of circle around that for a bit all right um i have another interesting question from margaret uh, about you know uh having enough time for contribution uh, asking what's the best way to manage or create space for pitching ids for new contribution uh, um, there are numerous design teams that can maintain visibility into what other teams are doing um, without creating too much meeting overhead. I think mainly it's about you know allow, uh, allowing you know enough time to um, yeah how to how to manage the time for contribution. Maybe not an easy one. <laughs> Um, on our side, we have a experimental library on Figma and every designer can create a component or update a component on this library. And once it's done, it's usually linked to a component request. So open discussion, everyone is aware that there will be this or that we are thinking of this new component or this component update and everyone can participate. Uh, we try to avoid having meetings for everything. Um, so we have the kickoff meeting and then it's open discussion on Slack. We keep track of all the decision and, and discussion directly on the contribution ticket on, on Jira. And um, yeah, the playground, the experimental playground is here for that. And the component can you can play with the with this component until it gets added to the core library, and when when the specifications are validated, when the component is implemented, the documentation is ready to be released. We take this component and push it to the core library, and once it, once it's in a core library, um, only design system designers can update it. Everyone can create a branch, Figma branch, to update or fix stuff, but it goes through. Uh, the contribution process again. All right. Um, and I think maybe you mentioned it, I'm not sure, but as, as a question, you know, asking uh, if you have a standardized format for people to submit requests or, or to a contribution. So, so maybe it's about tooling, but maybe it's also about templates uh, or things that maybe they can reuse. Uh, I'm curious maybe to know if there are some Figma files or some I don't know, Google Forms, things like that, that uh, can help people to submit requests? Ours just go through GitHub usually. Um, sometimes they come in via email or, you know, random places like every organization, but we try to uh, at least get them or, or us to transfer that into to GitHub and as a formal issue. And adding to like what Teddy was saying earlier, um, we don't have a specific like Figma file experimental one, which is a really good idea, by the way. Um, but any designer can create mockups and and pitch that in GitHub, and we can discuss it that way. So, cool. 
usually we ask uh, two simple questions. Uh, where would it be used? Can you provide examples of where it would be used? And can you explain why it would benefit the design system? And by those two questions, th those are the two questions we are asking in the first contact for a contribution request. And then we iterate on that. Either it's asynchronous on service desk or either it's during the kickoff. Okay, maybe, yeah, maybe, because as this as a question, maybe that's link to what you just said, Teddy. Uh, someone is asking if you can elaborate a little more about how uh, your team determine, determine whether the request should be included or not in the design system. Uh, is it by answering this question you just mentioned, or is there a, other criteria, perhaps? No, it's um, it's uh, three or four questions, yes or no questions. Uh, is it? I don't have. I don't know them. <laughs> is it? Is it's it okay. reusable? Uh, is the impact on the design stem? Um, oh, is it reusable? Is it existing? Is it? Uh, um, does the impact can be measured on the design system? And uh, that's pretty much it. If all the three questions are yes, we do include the design, the component. All right. Same for us, basically. <laughs> we don't have like a more formal questionnaire that somebody submits it, but when we do get requests, uh, the lead sort of ask those same questions. You know, is this going to be used multiple times? Um, you know, because it's it's an investment to to build something, so it better be used multiple times. And does it does that component already exist, or does it exist in a different way, or could we maybe extend a current component to solve the same problem? Um, and we usually ask those questions twice: first during the kickoff meeting, and then there's the open discussions. Everyone can contribute to the design stem to the component and. It evolves. Maybe the specifications or the need is um, are widened, and, and so just before the implementation, when we have the full specification of the component, we ask ourselves again those questions, because usually reusability and is it existing or not are the same answer, but the impact of on the design system can can change. We might start with um, a very small component. And other teams say, oh, I could need it for this, but I would need these options. I could need it for that, but I would need to add those and those variants. And in the end, you you end up with a very complex component. And in that case, we can say, oh, maybe it's not worth it, or maybe it's not, it's too big to be handled by the design system, or we need to split it into two different components. So we have two validation steps. Okay, interesting. Um... And maybe the next step is, uh, it's a question from Barack uh, asking what is the process uh, for designers uh, after an update of component? Is there something after, you know, making an update or, and contributing? Do you maybe, you know, keep them updated about the, the next step or something? Um, any designer that is creating a component from the beginning is involved throughout the whole process and, and is the design reviewer at the end as well to make sure it fits their, their need um, and their design. Um, so they're involved from the get-go and sometimes they're the ones even helping write the documentation, so. And we have communication. When the component is released, we communicate on the Slack channel. Oh, this is available. You have, um, if it's an update, you have the change log on the uh, library public, um, publication on Figma, and you have a summary of everything in our monthly newsletter. Okay. Uh, there's Esther who has a question for you, Teddy. Um, uh, asking what happens if is one of the questions that you just mentioned is uh, answer, is answered with no. Uh, she's talking about the support request for a new component. Uh, if it's no, <laughs> um, today it means that it won't be part of the design system. So it won't be owned 
by the design stem, it won't be documented on our documentation platform, and it would uh, it would be uh, the tribe who will need to manage this component. We are thinking more and more as our design stem grow to have child libraries, where, for example, the product card I mentioned earlier would be a customer journey component in the customer journey library, but it would benefit from all the process, all the quality that we are putting in design stem components and documentation. We would have a section in our documentation say, oh, those are just customer journey components. And so if it, it it's, uh, it's tricky today, uh, uh, because we are saying no more and more, I think, I feel, because as our design stem grows, all the basic components, we already have them. So today we are talking about very specific or very complex components that are linked to, that could be linked to a very specific part of our product. And in that case, should it live in the design stem or should it live in the child, child of the design stem? That's still unclear for us. Okay, uh, I have this question from Himant. Uh, how can I sell on uh, or, or, or encourage all the teams uh, to rely uh, for their components on design system, even contribution? Um, I don't know if that's clear enough. Um, is this on the idea of needing a design system or how to get people to contribute to the design system? I feel like it's, uh, yeah, it's relying on the design system um, through contribution. Uh, idea yeah. of having a design Yeah, system. I think, okay, yeah. Uh, money, <laughs> really the biggest seller. Um, it costs a lot more, um, both in maintenance and scaling to everyone do their own thing like the Wild West. Um, it costs a lot, a lot more. So if you're able to put the money up front to fund the creation of a design system, then um, uh, not only do your users get a better experience overall, but um, your developers will have a better experience overall. Um, from my experience, I you know most developers tend to want to take the path of least resistance. So if there's a component that can do a thing for them, they'll find that thing. And if they're going to go out into you know the wild web and find some random thing from some library that'll do that thing for them, they will. And there's never a guarantee too that that will be accessible or even fit or even look like your design system. Um, and so you just run a massive risk of costs that come later um, just because you're trying to solve a quick thing now um, especially if you get sued for accessibility purposes but um you know so there's that all right um we have a few minutes left uh, before uh ending this webinar uh unfortunately yeah uh, we are not able to answer all of your questions but uh there are a lot actually uh thank you uh to to the audience for all these questions um uh it's amazing yeah to see so much again engagement um yeah i wanted i wanted to thank you both of you uh, to uh, uh, yeah to answer all of these questions and to share your uh, experiences about uh, contribution at uh, Back Market and, and Red Hat. Um, if you have any other question, uh, feel free uh, to uh, join our Zero Slack uh, community uh, if you want to um, to continue the the discussion with uh, uh, with other other folks. Um, and uh, and yeah, thank you all for attending this uh, second Design System Essentials webinar. Uh, and uh, we will keep you in touch for uh, for the upcoming ones. Um, and uh, oh yeah, see, see see you soon. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Bye.